Um, I have the distinct pleasure and honor of welcoming you to this Christmas Eve service. And if I see some yawns this evening, I'll know it's a different reason than for Sunday mornings. And that's okay. But it is a beautiful night to celebrate our Lord's birth. And as we contemplate on, oh, this holy night, please sit back and listen to that first anthem. I do need to note um, that in your bulletin this evening, you will see that for the bidding prayer, um, we have Joyce's name. She is joining us this evening via live stream. Hello, Joyce, and Merry Christmas. Um, she's going to be celebrating this Christmas in the hospital. From what we understand, things are okay, but just keep her in your prayers. They're keeping her for observation. So Kristen Savage, home for the holidays, will be filling in for Joyce. O Holy Night. <clears throat> o Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining.
hymns all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise, sweet love is in us. Praise his holy name. you'll stand and join me to the call of worship. <clears throat> Let us not wrap, stack, box, bag, tie, tag, bundle, seal, or keep Christmas. Christmas kept is liable to mold. Let, Let us, us give Christmas, Christmas away, away unwrapped, unwrapped by exuberant by armfuls. Let's share, dance, live Christmas unpretentiously, merrily, responsibly with overflowing hands, tireless steps, and sparkling eyes. Christmas given away will stay fresh, even until it comes again. Beloved in Christ, as we await the great festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves so that we may be shown its true meaning. Let us hear in lessons from Holy Scripture how the prophets of Israel foretold that God would visit and redeem the waiting people. Let us rejoice in our carols and hymns that the good purpose of God is being mightily fulfilled. Let us celebrate the promise that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will bring all peoples and all things into the glory of God's eternal kingdom. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. But first, let us pray for the world that God so loves, for those who have not heard the good news of God or who do not believe in it, for those who walk in darkness and the shadow of death, and for the church in this place and everywhere, that it may be freed from all evil and fear and may in pure joy lift up the light of the love of God. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to God in the words that Christ himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil.
You may be seated. Our first scripture comes from Genesis chapter 3, verses 18 through 15 and 17 through 19. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The the serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you are taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. next reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verses 15 through 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. 
I'm going to ask my family, Kathy, Allison, and Jimmy, to come up for the lighting of our Christ candle tonight. The Advent season, which brings the church liturgical year in a time of preparation for our hearts and minds for the anniversary of the Lord's birth on Christmas. This evening we read from Micah chapter 5, verses 2 through 5a. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth and he will be our peace. The wreath and candles are full symbolism tied to the Christmas season. The wreath itself, which is made of various evergreens, signifies continuous life. The circle of the wreath, which has no beginning or end, symbolizes the eternity of God, the immortality of the soul, and the everlasting life we find in Christ. The four candles represent the four weeks of Advent, the one candle, it, when one candle is lit each Sunday. On this Christmas Eve, we light this Christ candle as a sign of love, peace, joy, and hope in our lives. God has called us from darkness and has given us a great light, and the darkness shall never overcome it. O come, O come, Emmanuel. <laughs> hear these words from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2, 6, and 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
Reading from Isaiah chapter 11, 1 through 4, and 6 through 9. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest in him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes, or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. The wolf and the lamb, the wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. A cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will be put, will put its hands into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thank you. 
We're reading from Luke 1, verses 26, 35, and 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the Gabriel, Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendant. Forever his kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Come now, before the Christ child, bring all that you are and all that you have. Offer your gifts in wonder and surprise and awe. Offer your gifts in joy and delight. Will the ushers please come forward?
Our next reading is from the book of Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. I'll be reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they turned, so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger.
The Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 2, the first 12 verses. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where this Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's sing together. in the Bible. You heard me read it. How many kings did it say were there? How many magi? Did it say in the Bible? The Bible never says how many magi there were. It says there were three gifts, but it never says that there were three kings. It doesn't even say they're from the Orient, just from East. Probably Iran or Iraq. But it doesn't really say Orient. We get three kings from the Orient thanks to John H. Hopkins Jr. in about 1857 when he wrote a hymn. He placed the number as three. He placed their geographic position as the Orient, right? And so we've sung that my entire life, right? And so I've always thought three kings from the Orient, but we three kings of Orient are not in the Bible. We do know one thing for sure. They were men. Because if they had been women, they would have stopped and asked for directions way earlier. (laughs) They would have gotten there a lot sooner. And they wouldn't have brought useless gifts. They would have brought casseroles. They would have brought diapers. And they would have helped clean up that stable and made it a halfway decent place to live. Amen? 
at least half the audience should say amen. <laughs> but what we do know is that they went seeking this Savior. Non-believers, pagans probably, from another country, but they were drawn by dreams and by stars and weird signs to go to this place and look for this Jesus, the Messiah. That's why we call them wise. Not because they could divine things from dreams, not because they were good uh, at looking at the stars and getting their bearings and getting directions to a place. That's not why we say they were wise. We say they were wise because of what the end goal was to find this child who would be king. We call them wise too because they paid attention to a dream that said, don't go back and report to Herod. Go home another way. But are we wise? That's really the question. Because the truth is wise people still seek this Christ. People who aren't so wise, like I was not so long ago, seek truth and meaning in all kinds of other ways. Right? And seek to fill those empty places inside in all kinds of other ways. But at some point, somehow, we wise up. And we seek after this Christ, this Savior who was sent for us. Julie Caro puts it this way. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the days of Herod the king, there came from the east to Jerusalem wise ones with gifts to bring saying where is he that is born this precious king of the jews for his star appeared in the east to announce this glorious news and lo the star which they saw went before them on their way till it came and stood over the place of this wondrous holy day with exceeding great joy and praise they entered into the place where they saw the young child with Mary, Jesus, face to face. They fell down and worshipped the Savior in complete humility and awe, bowed in pure amazement of all they heard and saw. This king had no grand arrival, no trumpet announcement of birth, no fancy attire to clothe him with the inheritance of his worth, Yet as they beheld this child, they began to see his fame. For he was clothed in mercy and truth by the power of his name. He wore a crown of glory and righteousness became his robe. His kingdom spans the universe beyond the earthly globe. Yes, this child was royalty. They could sense it in their souls as they opened up their treasures of frankincense and gold. Laid before the king, they presented him with their best rejoicing in the blessing to be his honored guest. Now the wise still seek his face, as they did in days of old, to give the Lord their hearts more precious than silver or gold. For the king still lives today and invites us to his side to reign with him in glory, as his beloved bride. Amen. I invite you to join me in a Christmas affirmation of faith that is printed in your bulletin. We believe in God the creator and giver of life who brought all creation to birth, who mothers us and fathers us, protecting, nurturing, and cherishing us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God born among us as a fragile baby. 
embodying both love and the need for love, and calling us to rest in God as trusting as a tiny child. We believe in the Holy Spirit, breathed into us at our birth, always drawing us on to be born again, encouraging, exhorting, comforting, nourishing our growth, and inspiring our living. We believe in the reconciliation of the world to God through Christ. Haunted at birth and humiliated at death, Christ entered our fearful darkness so that we might enter His glorious light and share the life of His resurrection. And we believe that each new child is a glimpse of the face of God, a sign of life to come, and a call to live in peace and celebrate living together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. And amen. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of being your people, called to live lives of hope and called to worship your son who gives us hope. We thank you for this evening being drawn to this place by whatever means, by a star, by a dream, by an invitation, by a family member, that you would keep us up at this hour so that we might see the Christmas morning come. Bless us this night with knowing that your son came for us. It's in his precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Our final scripture reading this evening is from John chapter 1, first 14 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through the world, world was made through him, and the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who re did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, nor a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen the face, his face glory, the glory of one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Come and join me, and you and Rick, and we'll show people not, how not to burn themselves. Just remind you this as you light the candle, you saw the one that's not lit tilts, not the one that is lit, so you don't get hot wax all over you. I'm going to invite the guitar ensemble if they would come and lead us in Silent Night as they begin to sing 
we'll work our way up the aisle to uh, share this light with you and invite you to join us in singing Silent Night. us remember the birth of Jesus, that we may share in the song of the angels, 
the gladness of the shepherds and worship of the wise men. Close the door of hate and open the door of love all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be merry with open hearts. May the Christmas morning make us happy to be your children and Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiving and forgiven. For Jesus' sake, amen. amen. Now may the Lord Jesus come to us, be born in us this night, in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. May the light of his life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, God in us. Merry Christmas. <laughs>